Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 108 year old classic sailing yacht, Tally Ho. Now, last week I cut out the new keel timber out of a huge chunk of Purple Heart using a chainsaw on a jig and positioned it roughly underneath the boat. This week we're going to be looking at hogging and trying to bend the entire boat back into shape. I'm also going to be getting a couple of really cool pieces of machinery on site which are hopefully going to help with the project. Alright, so what's interesting here is that when I lift the keel up against the boat, it becomes very clear that the shape of the bottom of the hull is curved so it's further up in the middle than it is at the ends. I know this change of shape hasn't happened since I took the keel out because the old timber keel I can see has that same shape in the top and bottom of it. They wouldn't have built it with a curve and they would have built it with a straight keel timber and the top of the ballast keel would have been straight as well. So what's actually happening here is I'm taking the weight of the boat back onto the keel timber and that's going to start taking the weight of it off of these props. Now I can see that while it's touching here at the bottom of the stem and it's touching on the stern post in the middle it's actually up by about an inch or more. So what that tells me is that the boat has hogged a little bit. Hogging is when uh, the boat basically bends. The midsection of the boat goes up and the bow and the stern go down. In old wooden boats, it's often caused by extra buoyancy in the midsection because it's a fuller shape compared to the bow and the stern and that pushes the middle of the boat up. It can also be caused by the way that it's stored when it's out of the water, if it's not shored up correctly. Anyway, the good thing is that Tally Ho hasn't hogged that badly. That hogging might just be in the bottom of the boat or it might have transferred to the top a bit but it's just not that noticeable by eye. Either way I want to try and get it out. But first I want to try and measure the shear line on the boat as it is now and compare it to the drawings. Alright so I've set up this line here and this represents the baseline. Uh, I measured it off the top of the keel from the drawings. Now this line is parallel to the water line but it's lower down and it runs along the bottom of the boat so it would be along the bottom of the ballast keel if the ballast keel was in position. And from this line I can measure up to any point on the boat and then reference that to the drawing to work out how close what we've got here in reality is to the drawing. Now it's important to bear in mind that she might not have been built exactly to her drawings. Okay so what's actually happening here is we've got the theoretical bottom of the boat here exaggerated and we can say that this is the bow and this is the stern of the boat and then up against that I'm putting straight keel timber. I'm pushing up on either end of this keel timber with bottle jacks and that is pushing up the bow assembly and the stern assembly and in relation to that the centre of the boat is coming down and closing this gap. Now in reality this line doesn't actually exist but there's an after deadwood here and there's the forefoot of the boat here and in between, there's a lot of flaws every other frame. And what actually happens here is that as this line flattens out, the flaws actually hit the keel timber before the forward part of the after deadwoods and the after part of the forefoot. And that's because the old keel timber had notches for the flaws in it. So they were coming slightly below the surface here. So they are hitting the new keel timber before these parts because the new keel timber doesn't have these notches in it. Now you can see here on the construction drawing what I'm talking about. This is the after deadwood. This is the keel timber, the mast step and forefoot up here. And then these are the floors which are actually notched into the keel slightly. Although the dotted line you see here isn't relating to the floors, that is relating to the frames which actually notch in much further into the keel timber. The floors only notch in half an inch and that's not marked on the drawings. The problem is all these iron floors, they were made in such a way that they were left with a slight round on the bottom. And to fit that round onto the keel, what they did was they notched out a little piece out of the top of the keel timber. I don't want to notch out the holes for the floors in the new keel. It's basically another water trap, so there's no real good reason to do that if you don't have to. So what I'm going to do is just take the floors out and I'm going to replace them as I go with uh, timber that will hold the bottom of the frames together.
Hey, hey, look at that. You yeah. having fun or are you pissed? No, I'm, I'm good. You good? I'm good today. <laughs> Today's all right, yeah. <laughs> right on. All right, well, it's really hard to show this on camera, but I think I managed to straighten out the boat. I've bent the hog out of it, straightened the backbone, and it's all level, and it's touching the new keel timber in all the correct places, so that's great. Hopefully, I won't have to move the keel timber again. Now, it doesn't seem to have affected the shear line at all, but if it has added a little bit of shear, then that's not a problem. It'll just make up for any that she might have lost over the years, but the shear line looks great, so I'm not concerned about it. And I'm really excited because later today, I'm expecting a delivery of something that's gonna help the project out massively. Amazingly, I've been offered to borrow this forklift. Sliding around the uh, whole sea. This thing here runs on this ways that's milled into it. And there's one on the other side too, so it, it sandwiches the main frame. It's a little crusty right now, but it cleans up good. So we don't know exactly how heavy this saw is, but it's really bloody heavy basically. So we're taking it apart to be able to lift it out of here. Where did this saw come from originally, Nate? We know it was built in Philadelphia. I purchased it approximately 1980 or 81. I brought it back to Bainbridge Island where our shop was and reassembled it and we used it to, to build several boats. Do you have any idea of the age of the saw? We don't know precisely, but from the uh, dates that the company that made it were in business, we think it might be anywhere from the late 1890s all the way up to the 1920s or 30s. About the age of the tally ho perhaps. Yes, yeah. how fortuitous. <laughs> Leo's just like I was back in the day, and, and he'll keep it going for another 50 years. I should have had your video at our place years ago. This is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> So we had quite a day yesterday, I've got the ship saw here and there were six of us working on it, getting it dismantled and uh, getting it onto the trailer. But it's here now and we're ready to start putting it back together. Really great to have the forklift here, that made it so much easier to move this around. You'll see eventually how it works, but it's essentially built to saw heavy timbers and cut rolling bevels in them. So the whole saw blade rotates around this big C-frame. 
if this was in a big workshop, you'd also have rollers on the sort of workshop floor, um, you know, in front and behind of the store. But this sort of thing would have been used to build the frames on, you know, huge tool ships, on naval vessels, you know, on just big boats. And um, it really is a, a historic artifact, really. There's probably not that many of them around. I don't necessarily need this to do this boat. Um, many boat builders don't have these, most don't. Um, and I could do the framing job with a chainsaw or with the Steve saw or with any number of things. But I bought this saw because A, I was offered it for a very good price by someone who wanted to see it used and restored and go to a good home. And B, just because it's, it's just such an amazing, cool piece of machinery. And um, you know, I know I don't need any extra work at the moment, but to restore this and, and get it working properly is just something that I couldn't resist. Now hopefully I'll be able to use this for years and years to come. Uh, maybe one day I'll even ship it back to England and you know, if I start a yard in England I'll be able to use it there. So for me again it's, it's about really the story of this object and being able to use this to rebuild the historic yacht Tally Ho. We've got a whole team helping with this saw today and uh, Al here in the sun is staying for a few days, come all the way down from Canada right? That's correct, 1367 kilometers. Wow. wow. So this is uh, Eric and Logan, and Logan actually helped me out last year a bit, um, but they're both at the Northwest School of Wooden Boat Building, right? Yeah, we're in a year-long program learning how to build wooden boats. It's, uh, it's really nice to see more uh, sort of younger generation working on wooden boats and into building them. Uh, what attracted you guys to that sort of lifestyle? I'd been in the Air Force and uh, trained as an engineer before that. Yeah. I uh, was facing leaving the Air Force and um, really didn't want to go work for another big organization. Sure. Um, and also really wanted to get my hands directly on whatever I was working on. Mm -hmm. So that really kind of drew me towards this. Uh, so I didn't like growing up, didn't have like a lot, a lot of confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I went to Maine Maritime Academy and did um, a sailing program with them just have felt like I had skills and I could do things with my hands and boost my confidence through the roof. Mm -hmm. um, and I always found myself on various boats um, doing a lot of repair work and uh, wish I knew more. Boat school seemed like the next logical step. Yeah, so yeah that goes in, I think. Yeah, that's just... But with that wash... <laughs> What are you doing there? I'm using a jackhammer to dig a hole through all this dirt and concrete. What's the purpose of the hole? The purpose of the hole is so that we can put one of these wheels down below. Uh -huh. You look tiny up there. Good, we should get a picture then. Nate's been working on this uh, electrical contraption which I don't understand very well but it's essentially to convert uh, 240 single phase power to three phase power which is what we need to run the saw. So we have the belt a little loose yeah, and that allows the uh, three phase motor to come up to speed gently. Three phase motor is running on single phase also connected to the saw uh, start switch, so the saw will run down. So it's only using only about five or six amps. That's not bad. That's just idling. So here we've got our new blade on, and uh, I'm just going to test it out for the first time and uh, see if we can cut something. <laughs> I 
like a hot knife through butter. Well, I think we've got a working ship saw, Nate. Yeah, we do. Thanks again oh, for yeah. all your help with it. We really appreciate it. Well, I'm glad to have it in the hands of somebody who knows what it is and understands it and <laughs> has a use for it. Well, I'll do my best. Well, you've done a huge amount of work on this saw and been a bit camera shy, <laughs> but thanks a lot for your help. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome, Leo. <laughs> thanks for your hospitality. <laughs> That's okay. And the cold beer. No, well, thank you for the beer. <laughs> I just I just made it cold. <laughs> well, I'm really pleased with the ship saw. It's running really well. It's cutting perfectly. Um, had some great help to get it set up and get all the electrics set up. One day we might get it painted and looking really shiny and nice, but for now it's a working tool and a working yard more than a museum piece and uh, I think it's suitable the way it is. going to keep it really well greased and well lubricated and all the essential parts are going to be maintained. So hopefully I'm just going to get on with it and get cutting some frames as soon as possible. As you can probably see, I messed up a little bit. I put the chain around the top of this stack to stop it tipping over while I was moving it and then uh, I kind of forgot it was there, backed out and pulled the top half of the stack out with me. Well that's it for now folks, so thanks a lot for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise contributed towards the Tally Ho project. It really does make a huge difference and I really appreciate it. It also means I'm able to take the time to keep making and editing these videos, so thanks again. And I'll see all you guys next time when I'm going to be hopefully cutting new frames out of the Live Oak framing stock using the ship saw. Alright, cheers!